I will now introduce tonight's speaker. Brian Barnaby grew up in Dallas, attended Lake Highlands High School, and went on, then went on to play football at the University of Northern Colorado. There he was an All-American tight end, and he was part of three conference championship teams and two national championship teams. After college, Brian came back to Dallas. He and Mark West have been volunteering in the Lake Highlands community ever since. Between 2007 and 2013, Brian was the high school minister at Northwest Bible Church. <laughs> but has spent the last year starting a new ministry at Northwest centered on sports and fitness, specifically training top level high school, college, and professional athletes for their sport and in their life. In his spare time, Brian has raised his three daughters, working towards a master's in cross cultural studies at Dallas Theological Seminary, and starting to volunteer at the Fellowship of Christian Athletes right near Northwest High School. I have had the privilege of working with Brian for many years. I have come to understand that he not only helps people physically, but more importantly, he also teaches and inspires people to develop character, leadership, and service. These three pillars, along with the pillar of scholarship, form the principles of the National Honor Society of Founded on. Brian is instrumental in bringing these pillars into our community, and I hope our new members will follow his great example. Now it is with great pleasure that I introduce you to my friend, Brian Martin.
because some person or some people in this organization or in this school or in this city or in this world will need you uniquely you. They will need your excellence. Get clear about what you must do. Find your purpose, the idea for which you're willing to live and die. Two quick considerations before we move on. One, I heard it said that the equipped are not always called, but the called are always equipped. I heard it said without explanation, but after years of kind of rolling this over, I, I think I've been able to put together what that means. You'll we'll see athletes or uh, students who have all of this natural equipping, but they don't have anything to drive to do something with it. But the called will always be equipped. Because with what they're lacking, the inventory of themselves and the evaluation of themselves, with their raw materials, they will strive to obtain. Because the called themselves them to do so. The called are always equipped. And number two, validate the object of your affection. Before you invent yourself according to this purpose for which you're willing to live and die, make sure it is worth it. Make sure that it is a cause worthy of your attention and affection. Make sure that your ladder is not leaning up against the wrong building before you start to ambitiously and arduously climb. Commit yourself to the findings of those who have gone before you, maybe those who are living under the same roof as you. From that platform, catapult yourself into the stratosphere of your chosen pursuit. But first, validate the object of your affection. You all good? Y'all with me? Okay, I'm not a kiss. Just for a word. All right, so get clear about what you must do. Find your purpose, the idea for which you're willing to live and die. As I think it's my next point, I would like to confess that I was a late bloomer intellectually, and I found it quite humorous that I was invited to speak at an induction ceremony for a society that I was not invited to attend. So I was like, Sorry about that, it's on me. Scholarship, character, leadership, service, uh, those were not near the top of my priority list that I didn't have. But in the Catholic Youth events that comprised my life thereafter, I did figure out a thing or two about perseverance, which is another focus of my message to you tonight. While taking an inventory of my own life, I saw that perseverance was a common thing. I recounted the fruit produced by perseverance, and I noticed a trend. When myself and my team in college were outmatched physically, including singing like a refreshing option, we persevered and became national champions. <laughs> when myself and my team were injured and physical location seemed like a trying task, we persevered and became national champions. <laughs> when myself and my team were distracted and focusing on our goals, uh, seemed like an unworthy effort, we persevered and got another raise. My cheek is really itching. Uh, <laughs> and when myself and my team were discouraged and felt that the public respect was not accurately appropriated, we persevered and got another raise. I don't do this often, so when I do it, <laughs> but enough about me. Let's talk about you. Those four years taught me about the value of perseverance. As you participate in this society, I challenge you to embark upon the extraordinary with perseverance. Don't just go through the motions and build up your resume. Transcend the thinking that would trap you into the monotonous minutia of menial matters. And walk in the excellence that comes when you embark upon the extraordinary with perseverance. Life's too short. Big opportunities are too few. Capitalization is too rare to simply go through the motions of this generation and be blocked out by the filter of greatness into the expanse of mediocrity where so many reconcile themselves. You see that path. Don't be that way. The aim of the great is good. The alternative to perseverance is settle for less. To refuse to be complacent. Fight the default of being tossed back and forth by the wind and waves of the world today. Embark upon the extraordinary with perseverance. And finally, I want to share an excerpt from the Danvers statement, which was put forth by a council who came together to address, in their words, things of great concern. 
concern in the world today. I realize that this needs a language specific to my industry, but I'm confident it will serve a great purpose in spurring you on today. It reads, with half the world's population outside the reach of indigenous evangelism, with countless other lost people in society that have heard the gospel, with the stresses and miseries of sickness, malnutrition, homelessness, illiteracy, ignorance, aging, addiction, crime, incarceration, neurosis, and loneliness, no man or woman who feels a passion from God to make his grace known in word and deed need ever live without fulfilling ministry for the glory of Christ and the good of this fallen world. I'd like to expound by hearing the point made by the Apostle Paul. We, though made one one body, each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesied, prophesy according to in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to read, then do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. Hopefully you guys can, can see that there is, in this body, there are individuals uniquely used among this very impressive group. You have different callings. You have different purposes. But they all build up into one potentially great effort. And you don't have to do what the person next to you is doing. You can do what you think you were built for. As a minister, I'm in the business of building up the church, and I specialize in building up individuals inside and outside the church. And I believe this echoes from the Danvers statement and scripture that follows serves as an excellent exhortation to these students who have been selected to be part of such a reputable. So let's own this statement for yourself. What are you seeing in the world today that is breaking your heart? Which of the conditions that were previously listed stood out to you as a great injustice or something that you would like to see change? What do you feel best Change the world by our 